Good evening, everyone. At this time, I'd like to call the meeting to order at 7-Eleven here on Monday, September 22nd. All members of the Board of Selectmen are present. Before we start the meeting, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the members of the board for wearing an article of clothing that is the color orange, and that is uh, to support and honor Leukemia Awareness Month in the month of September. So thank you, everyone, for participating in that. And at this time, I would like to start with the transmitting of Treasury Warrants 12, 12A, 13, and 13A. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Motion is made and seconded. Any discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, I do apologize. We were a few minutes late uh, getting into open session. At this time, I'd like to call our first appointment, which was a 7 o'clock appointment with Thomas Leach, the store team lead, and Marshall Tucker, who is the executive team lead for logistics for Target Corporation. The request is to obtain a common victual license for the property located at 210 Ballad Vale Street. Good evening. i just ask you to join us at the front table. And if you would like to introduce yourselves and tell us a little bit about your exciting activities that are coming up and the purpose of being here tonight. Thank you. Sure. Um, I'm Tom Leach. I'm the store team leader for the new store in Wilmington, obviously, Target. Um, I'm uh, Marshall Tucker. I'm executive team lead logistics. Uh, I do many different things in the store and report to Tom. So some of the things we have coming up um, on the 7th is um, it's called VIG night. It's basically like our version of a VIP night. Um, and that is in the evening. And then um, 8th is a soft opening. And the grand opening is on the 12th of October. Um, the purpose of us coming here is to obtain the victuals license for the, we have a Starbucks and a Food Avenue with approximately 35 seats. So we're, that's why we're here for that. We submitted all the paperwork and everything, but we came to speak to you folks. Wonderful. Thank you very much. So we do have the full application, and the manager will review that at this time. Uh, we do have some recommendations from the department heads, and we also all received this Come and Celebrate invitation. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to uh, thank you now, just in case I inadvertently forget to do welcome. that. Uh, Tuesday, October 7th, um, the board is certainly appreciative of these invitations. Of course. So thank you. I'm going to turn it to the manager now at this time. The uh, common victualers license was reviewed by the uh, health director, Shelley Newhouse. Uh, she indicates uh, she recommends approval of the application for common victualers uh, for Target at 210 Ballardvale Street. Uh, Al Spaulding, the building inspector, has also reviewed the uh, application. Uh, indicates that the uh, there are no issues with regard to the uh, bylaws or applicable codes, uh, no outstanding zoning issues uh, with the reference business. Excellent. At this time, I'd turn it to the board. Anyone have any questions, comments, or would like to make a motion to grant the request? Just a quick question. Could I ask you to repeat? You said it was a Starbucks, and what was the other uh, entity? It's called a, It's actually called a cafe. It's basically it's like popcorn refreshments. Yeah. Um, there's also pe like we have a Pizza Hut component of it too. Okay. Thanks. You're welcome. Anyone else? Would anyone like to make a motion? Uh, move that we grant the request. Motion has been made. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank You're you. Welcome. Thank you, Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so that's being passed around for signature. We'll move right along to our 705 appointment with Richard T. McClellan, Fire Chief for the Wilmington Fire Department to discuss Fire Prevention Month. Good evening. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Fire Prevention Month, as most of you are aware, next month, uh, October. It actually starts October 6th. And what we'll be doing is in the schools under the direction of Lieutenant Kavanaugh, who has uh, taken the reins over for Lieutenant Hurley, who retired, as many of you know. Um, and Lieutenant Hurley's been doing a fantastic job for the last 13 years. And what we basically do is all the grades from K to 5, uh, there is a firefighter uh, that goes in and has a little uh, talk. We have some DVDs. And there's a question and answer period for each one of them. The only difference is Abundant Life goes grades one through eight, because we also uh, encompass Abundant Life. So uh, what we do for the older kids, the, the videos and the, and the DVDs uh, are up to K3. And then the K4 and 5, we actually have this year something a little bit different. 
the Middlesex County Sheriff's Department has a smokehouse. Some of you may have seen it at first night. And it's about uh, making decisions. Some of these kids are getting older. There's this stove safety, there's fireplace safety, uh, things of that nature. Actually, how to get out of the building. There's smoke that's generated, a non-toxic smoke. Uh, and they evacuate the, the building. Some of them, there's a bedroom scenario in there. There's a uh, kitchen, living room. And it's actually a great tool. The kids get a lot of, uh, a lot of helpful information out of that when they go through that. So that will be what's going on uh, for that particular week. We are planning this year. We haven't had one for a few years. Uh, we're going to have an open house. And you'll probably be getting it in your selectman's package for next week, just to give you a rundown. That's on Saturday, October 11th. It's going to be from uh, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are going to do it jointly with the police department. Since we do share the same building, it's uh, something that we discussed that it doesn't make any sense for us not to include the police if people want a, a tour of that side of the building also. So they will be doing uh, seat belts, uh, car seats, excuse me, the car seats for the kids. Um, we will be having a guided tours from 11 to 2 all day that they can go through the various uh, spots, whether it be the... Uh, they always like the, the lockup. They like to see where the cells are. Um, you know, where the fire apparatus room is, obviously, uh, upstairs in our area, uh, dispatch area. And in addition, we'll have uh, the tower demonstration that will go on uh, from 11.30 on. We're going to have lunch that's going to be served. Right now, we're talking with a uh, vendor in town that's going to do the cooking for us uh, because we're going to be obviously needing our guys to do all these different uh, we are going to have an auto extrication also so that was uh, started it will be firmed up within the next couple of days so we're anticipating a, a very good crowd hopefully it's gonna be a nice day uh, we will have some uh, giveaways for the kids and um, looking for any support but again it should be uh, in your packets we will be doing another uh, extrication cutting up a car a lot of people like seeing uh, the tools and they'll be able to see the the vehicles, you know, all the apparatus, and uh, any questions they may have to the department. So that should do it. Sounds good. Yeah. Thank you. Any questions? any questions or comments at all from the board? I, I would like to say uh, thanks, the chief, for coming tonight. And uh, it's it's great that uh, you're doing all the uh, outreach for the for the kids. Obviously, we know it's extremely important, and you, the department's been doing it for years. That's the police department. Um, and I'd just like to publicly thank you. Uh, a few weeks ago, um, for, with the Military Friends Foundation, there was a Run for the Falling 5K race, and the Gold Star parents were there. And it's a beautiful day and some very nice ceremonies. And for the last two years, the Wilmington Fire Department has come along with their ladder truck and the big flag that they set up with the Linfield Fire Department's ladder truck. And uh, I can honestly tell you that, <clears throat> that the parents of uh, the fallen from Massachusetts, that means a lot to them. And there had to be pretty thousands of pictures taken that day. Yeah, it's pretty um, impressive. Really. It is. It and most of you remember Sean Collier's yeah. uh, time we had to. It just really looks uh, nice with the flag. Yeah, and it was the finish uh, line, so a lot of those, the runners were yeah, coming through. Yeah, good, good and, anything um, you can do to help you. Yeah, and uh, we, I know you have to borrow that flag every year, and every time you've used it, and you've used it at multiple um, mm. military funerals. And um, through a generous donation, there will be a, 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 one of those big flags donated to the Wilmington Fire Department. Yeah, that'd be fantastic. Uh, I know you had, had mentioned that, and you know it's nice. We always usually get North Reddings. This particular time, there was uh, something going on with North Reddings. We were able to get Woburns. Uh, we don't have it. I believe it's 15 by 30. Yes. Yeah, it's a good size. It's, good size yeah. flag. But yeah, we're very uh, we're looking forward to it. Uh, yeah. Having our own that we don't need uh, to rely on other people and. Yeah, we had to order to make sure it had enough of uh, the uh, air slits in it because it's a big flag. And, yeah, uh, when it's windy. Uh, when it's windy, it's like yeah. a big sail. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but again, publicly thank you. And um, I forget the two gentlemen that were there. there uh, Woods. That was Bobby Woods. Bobby and, Woods and uh, um, I can't remember if it was Rob Vieri or Billy Herrick. Yeah, yeah I'm and, not sure. and the um, Linfield Fire Department. Very impressive. And uh, thank you, publicly thank okay. you for thank that. Thank you for your uh, help in securing the flag. That was nice. I'm not going to tell you who the donor is yet. No, that's all right. Okay. <laughs> thank you very thank you. much. Thank you, thank thank you for being here. <laughs> okay, moving on to our next appointments for 715, which would be the status uh, request for information from the Investment and Youth Foundation, Inc. I'll turn it over to the town manager at this time. Uh, as the board knows, in response to 
uh, request from the board back in August, I sent a letter uh, to Kenneth Del Rossi, who is the president and treasurer of Investment and Youth Foundation, Inc. Uh, this group is essentially the uh, um, predecessor, if you will, of the Wilmington Arena Authority. Uh, the request was for particular documents uh, with respect to bylaws, minutes of meetings, conflict of interest uh, policies. Uh, that letter was uh, sent out on August 20th. Uh, on August 25th, I received uh, a response uh, signed by Mr. Del Rossi that uh, referenced <clears throat> the attorney who represents the uh, foundation, uh, Natalie Hoppel. Um, I spoke with her <clears throat> uh, at the end of August, beginning of September, uh, and she essentially was uh, looking for uh, the legal citations that would uh, compel uh, the foundation to provide this information. <clears throat> I indicated that I didn't have those citations at hand, uh, but uh, we could, uh, if necessary, provide that information. I requested that she provide <clears throat> uh, her, that, that she communicate that uh, <coughs> intention in writing, which I have not seen to date, and that's pretty much where we stand. So I have not received uh, any further uh, written response from uh, the Investment in Youth Foundation. Thank you. So in setting the agenda for the meeting, it was uh, discussed to have this on because I know that members of the board have, have asked that we uh, make a concerted effort to stay on this topic and stay the course to try and uh, work collectively with the various parties to obtain the information that we're looking for. Uh, so I think at this time, you know, we, we, we should have some general discussion as a board as to what makes sense in terms of any sort of um, advised direction that we may want to share with the manager as to how to proceed moving forward. From, from my standpoint, it appears, um, and I understand from a legal standpoint, any attorney is going to advocate for their clients and, and essentially, for lack of a better term, make the town do the work to, uh, to secure the information. Um, but at this point, you know, I'm, I'm losing a little bit of patience um, in terms of we've asked nicely uh, for the information and I would think based on, you know, um, the conversations that we've had that they'd want to get on the front end of this and kind of get out in front of it and um, provide the information that we've requested. So at this point, I'll, you know, leave it at that and turn it over to the members of the board to see if anyone else would like to make any sort of comments or have any general discussion. No, Judy, I just say basically you said it all. I, you know, I feel your same frustration and exactly what you said. So I'm just supporting exa exactly what you said, and we really need to uh, get some information. I, I, I'm sorry. I get the sense. Um, well, I get the sense that they are uh, that the foundation and youth. What is it? The, the what is in, uh, investment and investment youth, youth foundation. Yeah. Thank you. I always forget that. I get the sense that they're lawyering up, and I, that's just a terminology we all hear. Um, that instead of engaging and interacting with us directly, they're, they've put the lawyers up in front and deal with them. Um, so, I mean, it, it seems like a posture, and maybe I'm misinterpreting it. I don't deal with these kind of things on a, on a regular basis, but that's just a, uh, the impression I get is they don't want to interact or deal directly with the town um, and have thrown the lawyer at us. So, you know, I don't want to knee-jerk react to... Uh, fight fire with fire, but, you know, to the extent that it makes sense and it's within our rights, can we start taking more, um, oh, I don't want to say aggressive because it comes off as the wrong way, but more conservative, uh, I don't know, can we get more uh, intense in our efforts to get the information that we need? What are, what are our legal, legal rights? Or should we be having this conversation with town council uh, to get some advice from council as to how we can uh, go through the legal process to, to get the information we want because it seems like the, the nice way ain't working. Just a thought. And I don't know if, if Mr. Newhouse any I, I, I think um, I think that's a good idea. I'm, I, you know, support that step. Um, and, you know, what, what occurs to me is that w we invited this group in, they didn't take us up on that invitation. Uh, we sent a letter specifically 
you know, describing the documentation that we hope to be able to see and just kind of, you know, understand the history and, you know, presumably put this behind us. Um, I know anybody that's asked me for an update and I, and I gave them the status, you know, we sent the letter, letter was referred to their attorney, attorney has not provided paperwork uh, in, in summary. Um, folks' reaction has been the same. Well, they got to be hiding something. So, um, one of the things that occurs to me that, in addition to what you suggest, which I think makes sense, is that you know there are some, there's at least two uh, members of the board of directors who are Wilmington folks, and uh, I don't know Mr. Del Rossi personally, and I understand he's the the chairman that you know whose stamp was on the letter back saying please consult with counsel um, but I know uh, another individual on there Mr. Sullivan Dennis Sullivan um, you know he's he's a I mean I'm not pals with him but I know him and he's he's a great guy he comes from a you know a great Wilmington family and um, you know and it, and it occurs to me that he certainly has been on the board uh, of of this group in more recent years. I mean, it's not like, you know, if you rewind the clock to 1986 that um, that he was a member of the board of directors, at least that I know of. So, um, you know, maybe we, in addition to the to the approach that you're talking about, Mr. Shampoo, maybe we also take a step back and say, well, wait a minute, a for-profit corporation, a non-profit corporation, uh, either way, members of the board of directors are entitled to documents upon request from their chairperson, their business manager, their clerk, whoever is the custodian of the corporate records. So, um, you know, you, you take Mr. Sullivan, for example, um, I, I, maybe we should have just thought publicly asking, you know? So, you know, Mr. Sullivan, if you're out there and you're listening, if you could pick up the phone and call the, the, whoever's the custodian of the records and simply request them and pass them along to us, that, that'd be most appreciated. And, uh, you know, maybe this is, a, this is a good forum to make that request. Uh, beyond that, um, I'm all for, you know, the, the recommendations that you've made, Mr. Shampoo. Let's, let's see if council has any ideas with reference to legal citations and whatnot. So based on what I'm hearing, the, the last letter that was sent just to reconfirm, were all members of the board of directors copied on that letter, including Mr. Sullivan? Uh, yes, it was uh, copied to uh, Kevin Creeden, who's the clerk, uh, Dennis Sullivan, and uh, Joanne McCarthy. Okay. Do we want to pursue the legal avenue with our town council and also in conjunction um, you made a, a verbal plea, you know, here tonight, but do we want to put in any sort of letter to Mr. Sullivan? I think we can let that stand uh, to, to the extent that uh, the same public request is being made of any Wilmington resident that's on that board. I, I mentioned Mr. Sullivan only because I, I know him and I know he's a nice guy and I, and I know that he cares about the town. So, uh, you know, so I, I, I throw that out there. Um, this isn't from my perspective and I think uh, I think I share this view with the board. This isn't about trying to um, embarrass anybody, or t but it's about trying to understand what the heck went wrong and uh, how things got off track from the original intent. And that's all we're doing here. So, and and to the extent that you know that the town has been referred to their attorney, I guess let that stand on its own, and and let this public request stand on its own. Um, Maybe, um, you know, maybe it's quite simply a situation where they say, well, we have nothing to hide it. You know, I'll go get the records and give them to you. You know, knock yourself out. Maybe, maybe it'll be that simple. Okay. Anything further? No, no I, I, I'd love to hear from Mr. Sullivan. Um, but in the, uh, in the meantime, is it, can, we, can we make a call or send a letter off to uh, town council just to see what advice they might have for us in terms of documentation or letter writing or what the steps would be to m be more formal with our request uh, to uh, oblige the board uh, to provide us with the documents we're asking for? 
Uh, yes, I can certainly talk to uh, John Foskett about uh, you know what rights we have to the specific uh, documents that we've requested. Very well. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to communications. Uh, the first uh, correspondence is a memorandum to the board. Uh, this is a follow-up from uh, last uh, the board's last meeting. If you recall, uh, the issue was raised uh, by uh, the uh, town administrator and one of the selectmen in North Reading uh, with respect to the J.T. Berry uh, site. Uh, the uh, town of North Reading is looking to uh, purchase the property. Uh, it's my understanding they have a special town meeting scheduled for all early October to uh, obtain authorization uh, to fund that purchase. And uh, Mr. Uh, Gilberto, the town administrator, uh, was in touch with me about um, uh, this project and was looking to get a sense from the town of Wilmington as to our um, interest in uh, at least uh, supporting or perhaps not being opposed to the purchase. Uh, three acres of this uh, parcel uh, is uh, in the town of Wilmington. Uh, I've uh, had conversations with uh, both uh, Mike Woods, the Public Works Director, uh, and Carol Hamilton, uh, and they've uh, looked at the area and, and both suggest that uh, it would be in the town's best interest uh, that the property remain open space. The uh, area, uh, this three-acre uh, area is about 1,100 feet from the Salem Street well uh, which is a public uh, drinking water well. Uh, also, as uh, Carol Hamilton noted, uh, given the difference in tax rates between uh, the town of North Reading, which has a uniform tax rate for commercial, industrial, and residential, the town of Wilmington, as you know, has a different rate for the CIP, uh, and the, the fact that Wilmington's tax rate is uh, higher for commercial development the expectation is that any any development would likely be on the North Reading end and that the three acres would most likely be used for perhaps uh, some kind of support uh, for part of the development, whether it be parking or drainage or some other similar types of activities. So it's not likely that the town would uh, see any appreciable uh, benefit from any development there. Uh, so that's... Um, I don't know if the board has any further direction on that. I have had uh, conversations uh, as late as today with Mr. Gilberto. Uh, he was inquiring about uh, the town's uh, desires with respect to the property. Uh, I suggested that um, I would be meeting with the board tonight, but that my recommendation would be that the property remain as open space. Uh, he believed that, uh, uh, that his uh, board would not not have an issue with that. Ultimately, what has to happen here uh, is that their town meeting would have to authorize uh, funding to purchase. Then they would, uh, uh, their uh, representative delegation would uh, uh, file special legislation uh, to authorize um, the acquisition of the property. Uh, once the town, if the town purchases it, uh, then they would uh, develop it or have the uh, opportunity to sell it to a commercial development. Okay, so with that um, being the case, um, do you feel it would be beneficial if we were to give a formal communication from the Board of Selectmen with our request to see that it remains as open space, or do you feel that your conversation with Mr. Gilberto accomplishes the same thing? Do you feel that it's necessary for the Board to take a formal position since they asked us for feedback last meeting and we felt it was too soon? I, I think it would be uh, advisable for the Board to um, uh, offer, uh, to, to express an opinion as to whether uh, the Board is agreeable with the idea of keeping this property as open space or perhaps some other alternative. I'll just put it out there that I'm in favor of a formal communication that you know, obviously I'm not speaking for my colleagues, but uh, with an, a request that the Wilmington portion of the land be open space, and certainly would be interested in hearing from any other members that if you would support that direction. Absolutely. And I think it would be a good idea to get a correspondence from, uh, from
from us. Like you said, last meeting was the same meeting they were meeting, and right, kind of. Uh, but they were basically looking for that, and I, and I think Carol Hamms kind of uh, spells it out pretty good here. Yeah, Madam Chair, just to say, not realizing that we have a well within 1,100 feet, not realizing it at that particular time. Yeah, I'd definitely be in favor of uh, open space right now, knowing that we could put protection on that well. I was not aware of that at that time, uh, recently in an interview. Okay. Yeah. Uh, then I, I'd offer a motion that the, uh, <clears throat> that the uh, manager send a uh, letter on behalf of the Board of Selectmen uh, to the town of North Reading supporting uh, the preservation of the three acres in Wilmington is open space uh, through the legislative process. Thank you. Thank you. Motions are made and seconded. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. The board uh, received correspondence uh, from uh, Senator Bruce Tarr and Representatives uh, Jim Maselli and uh, Ken Gordon uh, updating us with respect to the Glen Road uh, Middlesex Ave <laughs> intersection project and uh, they indicate that it appears the project uh, will be going forward for advertising. You'll note in the correspondence here uh, that uh, the project is described as a roundabout which uh, was a little bit alarming when we looked at that. Uh, I think as uh, we looked into it further what uh, what they were providing here was a, a record, if you will, of the uh, original, uh, one of the original uh, options here. Uh, we've since confirmed that uh, it is, in fact, as it was uh, decided upon, it will be a conventional uh, traffic, uh, traffic uh, or intersection with uh, uh, traffic lights and so on. Uh, and we're still waiting to confirm that it um, will be in the central register. My expectation is that we would see that this week. So uh, we'll certainly uh, be paying attention to that. Well, yeah, I don't want to hold your feet to the fire here. But with that said, we didn't know what was going to happen with schedules and all this. And now this being advertised, do you have a, a general sense of what that means for overall scheduling and, and, and construction at all? How does it being advertised translate to it being done? Uh, well, presumably, if it is advertised, uh, they, the uh, state will uh, be actually um, seeking uh, bids from contractors. Uh, and it would, I, I would hesitate to offer any kind of a time frame just because I don't want to get anybody's hopes up. I'd, <laughs> what I'd like to do is really uh, get a sense from uh, the mass DOT as to what they expect the time frame to be. Um, it, it's certainly positive news if, in fact, this is advertised because it would suggest that there'll be, uh, as I say, uh, bids will be coming in and then uh, presuming that the funding is, in fact, available, they would make an award uh, perhaps at some point in the fall or, or early uh, winter. Thank you. It is good news. Uh, we have correspondence from uh, Mariah Barloff, Director of the Mass Office of uh, Disabilities. Uh, this is uh, sent to a local licensing, uh, local licensing authority uh, with respect to um, uh, alcohol licenses. And it's noted that the, uh, uh, the provisions of uh, Mass General Law 138.34b uh, uh, were amended in 2012. Uh, with respect to uh, proper identification cards for individuals that were seeking to be served. Uh, I guess they've had some uh, complaints from individuals uh, with certain disabilities who do not have a driver's license and uh, those individuals have, uh, because they've not been able to provide that type of identification, have not been served. In this correspondence, uh, they're asking that uh, we, the town, uh, forward their, uh, the policy to the various uh, establishments uh, that uh, provides for the fact that there there is a particular identification card uh, that individuals uh, can present and it is uh, credible so to speak so we've taken that step of uh, notifying our our liquor establishments Thank you. Uh, if I may 
uh, has the manager um, sent this out as recommended by the ABCC, or is that something we still intend to do? Or where no, no, we've, we've sent it to the um, establishments, okay. yes, right, yeah. Great. I, I missed that. Thank you. Uh, we have correspondence again from the ABCC. Uh, this is with respect to uh, off-premises retail alcohol uh, beverage licensees, uh, noting that uh, they are permitted, effective October 23rd, uh, 2014, they'll be permitted to sell uh, beverages uh, beginning at 10 a.m. on Sundays. Uh, and it basically, this uh, th there's no... Um, authority on the local licensing authority, in this case the Board of Selectmen, to uh, bar that. It creates this opportunity for um, uh, establishments to open on Sundays, and the letter describes the process uh, for the licensing authority to go through if, uh, if presented with such requests, which you'll see are later on on the agenda. Uh, we have a letter from uh, uh, Beth uh, Bresnahan uh, from the Mass State Lottery. Uh, she is uh, indicating that the, uh, they have uh, advised uh, Richdale, uh, the uh, Richdale uh, uh, Enterprise, that uh, they are eligible to uh, apply for an agreement to sell uh, Kino to go. Um, again, this is something that uh, uh, is offered periodically to various establishments. Uh, the police chief uh, has reviewed this uh, request and uh, indicates that uh, based upon uh, their uh, record and review, uh, the, uh, offering a Kino to go uh, license, he doesn't have a problem with. The board doesn't need to take any action unless the board was opposed to it. Uh, the board would have uh, uh, 21 days to uh, issue a letter as to why uh, such a license shouldn't be granted. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Moving on to board to consider. Uh, board to consider, this is a follow-up from prior correspondence. Uh, uh, in this case, uh, the um, Eli's Country Store is looking to uh, sell uh, alcohol beginning at 10 o'clock on Sunday, and they have um, communicated such. There's a um, Form 43, which is part of the application process with the ABCC. Uh, so the board is uh, requested to sign off on, on this form. So it's really just a notification. It's not a vote per se. Is that right? Right. There is no uh, ability uh, for the board to prohibit this, uh, it's essentially just a confirmation that, uh, for the record, so to speak, that they will now be open at 10 o'clock. Thank you. And I'll just uh, pass this around. Okay. Thank you. Uh, we also have a similar request uh, from uh, Eastgate Liquors uh, looking to open on Sundays at 10 o'clock. Same purpose, uh, again, the Form 43 to be signed by the board. I'm, uh, I'm sitting here trying to uh, think about whether or not uh, this makes sense. And, and I don't want to belabor this process, but it, it's striking to me that only two uh, off-premise stores have asked for this permission. And as much as I don't want to waste administrative time helping people do business when they don't ask for the help, uh, I'm also cognizant of the fact that if, if some retailers think they can do this as a matter of right, 
that we're going to end up with a due process hearing over, you know, an administrative snafu on their part. So I'm trying to remember how many off-premise establishments there are, and if there's a convenient way to make sure that they're aware, they, they need to, you know, they need to get this form signed if they're going to take advantage of this provisional right, I guess you would say. So I, I just leave that as food for thought for the manager. If, um, you know, if anybody inquires, I'd read rather you know, take up a, a, a pro forma request than a, than a violation, you know? We can certainly uh, no provide notice again. I believe this was previously sent out to the various uh, establishments. Well, we yeah. did that too? Yes. No, the heck with them then. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't remember that if we knew that. Sorry. <laughs> there, there may be others coming forward. We'll, I guess time will tell. Do they have a deadline that they need to? Because, you know, I didn't raise the issue because you and I had talked about this when deadline. we set the agenda, but mm -hmm. is there a deadline for them to to have this signed off on if they intend to exercise it? Uh, not that I know of. Okay. I think it's just an open okay. opportunity. Sure. Uh, we have a request uh, for an easement, a roadway rounding and drainage easement uh, this is, uh, would be between uh, Don uh, Stratuli and the town of Wilmington. Uh, he resides at uh, 22 Salem Street. Uh, this is, um, uh, he has approached the town, I guess, uh, some time ago about uh, difficulties in terms of accessing uh, Oak Street, which is off of Salem Street. And I guess given the layout of the uh, roadway, um, uh, people turning on to Oak Street essentially have to uh, go into the uh, oncoming uh, lane in order to make the turn. So this easement, uh, he's agreeing to uh, allow the town uh, to uh, access a portion of his property, establish an easement for purposes of uh, creating a, r a rounding area there so that the traffic can get in and out of there in a more safe manner. So the board is asked to uh, vote to um, uh, accept this easement and then to uh, sign off on it. We okay. need that uh, we accept the easement and execute the uh, the instrument that's been provided. Second. Okay, motion has been made and seconded. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. We also have for the board's consideration uh, correspondence uh, with regard to a, uh, a grant that the town is seeking to apply for. It's a community innovation challenge grant. Uh, these grants have been uh, in existence for quite some time now. Uh, about a little over $10 million has been uh, awarded in the various projects uh, to uh, 74 communities. Uh, the assistant town manager, uh, Kendra Amaral, has been uh, really the architect of this, if you will, in talking with uh, representatives from uh, Burlington. Uh, the premise here is that uh, we are constantly looking at ways to save on health insurance. Uh, everybody's probably familiar with uh, wellness programs and the desire of uh, taking steps that will uh, reduce uh, various health risks. <coughs> Another element of uh, dealing with rising health costs is addressing what's referred to as uh, inappropriate level of care. Uh, and th these are the instances where perhaps uh, someone uh, doesn't necessarily need to go to the emergency room, but perhaps decides that's where they want to go, or perhaps uh, you know, they're using prescriptions uh, and they have the opportunity uh, through their health plan uh, to uh, get uh, 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 mail order prescriptions that are less expensive, but they continue to purchase their prescriptions uh, through a local pharmacy. Uh, the intent here with this grant is to uh, obtain funding that would allow us to, uh, in, in conjunction with the town of Burlington, um, hire uh, a, uh, an outfit that would be able to provide a measure of 
uh, instruction, almost like a financial advisor, if you will, except in this case it would be a health insurance advisor, and, and basically have different uh, sessions with employees from both towns, educate uh, employees about how to get the best value for their insurance dollar, so to speak. So uh, I think this is, uh, you know, the, dealing with health insurance, uh, the, the cost is going to continue to go up. The, the best hope we can have is to <clears throat> reduce the rate of increase. Uh, it's estimated that uh, even if we can, uh, <coughs> you know, have some uh, effect on this, we could save as much as $210,000 a year um, on uh, health insurance costs. So I think it's a, uh, a very valuable uh, effort. The uh, grant itself is uh, due on October 10th. Uh, it's in the preparation stages now. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because it's uh, due October 10th prior to the uh, next selectmen's meeting, uh, I'm asking for the board to authorize me on behalf of the town uh, to sign the grant um, and get that in prior to the deadline. Great. I, I make a motion that we authorize the town manager to go forward with the grant application. Okay, motion's been made. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, do we have discussion? Did you have a comment, Mr. Champion? Yeah, I'm sorry. Thank you. I was jumping ahead. Um, so, Jeff, it, the, the usage of the funds, and I, I've read it now a couple times, it seems like it's primarily around education and communication uh, outbound to the employees as to what the options are and what they really mean. Is that effectively... What the, what the usage of the funds would be for? It would, yeah, it would be uh, educating uh, our uh, employees and their families on how to uh, use the uh, health insurance you know, most cost effectively because every dollar that we spend, whether it's going to a doctor or, or uh, for prescriptions, and, and prescriptions are um, you know, a rapidly rising element of the whole health insurance cost. If we can provide employees in a uh, non-confrontational way and in, in a really a, um, just to be better consumers of the use of their health insurance plan, I think it, it benefits them because, you know, their co-pays are going to be less, you know, they're going to be spending less in co-pays. It benefits the town because uh, we pay for the part of the health insurance as well. And that's the point I guess I, w I wanted to have you make um, it, that I was hoping I read correctly in here and you just uh, articulated better than I could have, which is that the benefit to the employee is the primary focus, but the town will in indeed. So you know, we as a, as a community and the budget of the town will benefit, but the individual employees themselves will benefit as well by being uh, more uh, aware, more educated consumers. So uh, I certainly support the effort and I just wanted to sort of expand on it a little bit the way that you just did. So thank you very much. So the motion's been made and seconded. We had discussion. Anything further? Are we ready for the vote? All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Okay, moving on to public comments. Seeing none. Moving on to new business and committee reports, and I will start to my left, please. Uh, not really a committee report. If you want me to formulate one, I'm glad to for our next meeting. But I did take the opportunity last Thursday to attend the regional meeting uh, for the Mass Selectmen's Association. It was held at the MMA offices in Boston. Uh, John Robertson is the MMA legislative director, and he sort of highlighted fiscal year, anticipated fiscal year 16 forecasts. Uh, some of the discussion was about OPEB, ironically, because we talked about that a little bit tonight. Uh, and Michael Widmer, who is the retiring president of the Mass Taxpayer Foundation, uh, came and talked about revenues, expected taxpayer revenues, uh, et cetera, to the state. So, and how that, that revenue gets dispersed uh, from the state out to the local municipality. So it was definitely interesting, uh, attended by about 25 to 30 fellow select uh, people from various communities in our region. So um, it was, uh, I'm glad to share one-on-one uh, -on -one conversations with any of you if you feel inclined to ask. But uh, um, yeah, anyway, I just wanted to let you know that I was there. So thank you very much. Thank you. I'm good, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay, anything over I'll here? I'll sit here. Yeah. Madam Chair, I would just like to um, take this opportunity to publicly thank our police chief, who is uh, who's here tonight, and the work that he has done with his staff, his, his uh, all the police and detectives in town, and especially um, Detectives Dindo and Bossy, for the work they do on individuals with drugs, 
and drug addiction. And last week, I believe Friday night, there was a substantial drug bust in Wilmington. Um, they're not driving a wedge in between themselves and these these kids, and a lot of them are in trouble and in a bad way. And they're going out of their way. They're calling, they're following up with these kids, and it's uh, kind of being on the inside of it through the veterans office with them. It's, it's just um, they should be commended publicly for the work that they're doing. And um, I thank you, Madam Chair, and I thank you, Chief, and uh, for your and your entire department. Thank you. Thank you. So I uh, appreciate that comment. I wanted to just offer two comments. Uh, one, it's on the important dates, but October 9th is the Entile Farm Workshop uh, at the Wilmington Middle School in the cafeteria at 7 o'clock. I want to thank uh, Assistant Town Manager Kendra Amaral and Jeff for working with me on this and all of the committee at large to bring this to fruition. This is going to be the last uh, public forum to discuss the development of Yentile Farm, and uh, we're really excited to uh, bring some changes to the plan to that meeting and to um, garner any additional feedback that might be out there. So look for future press releases in the newspapers and other media outlets to uh, talk about that evening. And I wanted to switch over to a memo that Jeff was kind enough to draft and put in your packets. I will try and be succinct and brief, which you all know that's not really my strong suit. So. Um, this memo really talks about it in its entirety, and that is that I had received an invitation as the chair of this board to join the other chairs for the town of Reading, uh, the town of North Reading, and Linfield to discuss RMLD. And I want to preface this by saying that this was not a negative meeting um, about RMLD. Uh, I'm pleased as a consumer to have, uh, you know, my electricity through RMLD. Uh, but there have been some recent events uh, recently that the chair of the town of Reading wanted to essentially clear the air with the other uh, chairs to cascade this information through to our respective boards. And that's um, the town of Reading does own RMLD, but they do function as an autonomous entity. And they don't uh, have, for lack of a better term, you know, absolute governing rights over RMLD and what they do. And specifically, um, they don't have just free reign and free access to their financials in some of the manner in, in cultural ways that they do business. So the memo that I sent, uh, excuse me, the packet of information that I sent to you or passed along talks about uh, a couple of different areas. One was the recent rate increase that we had had in 2014, uh, the chair for the town of Reading wanted to apologize uh, for that rate increase, and it indicated that they too were surprised uh, based on the time that it actually was announced in terms of how it relates to when your your town budgeting process unfolds. Um, he did not think that the process was truly transparent and didn't feel that there was enough of a business justification as to why the rate increase had to take place at that time for the amount that it did. So there's a lot more detailed information about that. Um, in addition, there was also an improper disposition of vehicles by RMLD. There was a full investigation on that. Uh, there wasn't a lot of personal information, but the sum and substance of that is that they did launch a full investigation and they um, are happy to report that the vehicles were returned, uh, the money was returned uh, to the person that was awarded the bid, and they're working through some internal efficiencies to see that that does not happen uh, again in the future in the manner that it did. The last is the uh, sale of renewable energy certificates, and that is in and of itself uh, a course of, uh, of understanding. Um, but in essence, um, there are differing opinions as to whether or not RMLD should hold on to these renewable energy certificates or sell them off and realize revenue over a period of time. So um, the boards of selectmen are of the understanding and belief, uh, at least some of them, that they should sell them off to realize the revenue. And it's my understanding from a very elementary level that um, once you sell them off, they're gone and you can't claim that as part of your portfolio that you have a green offering. So there's believed to be some value with that. So um, what I will say to you is that the purpose of uh, the chair from Reading coming forward is to say to all of the chairs and put us on notice that in the future he's going to be looking for some help from the various chairs to kind of unite in an effort um, to have more um, 
jurisdictional rights to RMLD and how he, he, they go about doing that remains to be seen. The first step that they're doing, and that was really the um, origin of the meeting, is that September 29th they're having a, a town meeting and there's two articles that are put forward and the way uh, John Arena had described it is that Article 14 is essentially a band-aid and Article 15 is essentially a long-term fix and that's basically to get town meeting vote for them to be able to um, have permission to go towards the financial records and some of the deep dive metrics that RMLD has that they have not shared up to this point. So um, this is very high level information to you. We did not spend a lot of time going over everything, but it's a few issues that have come across that the uh, chair was not pleased in terms of how things unfolded in terms of timeline and substance and the town of Reading is working towards um, having a little bit more control over RMLD as an entity. Okay. Any questions? Yes. <clears throat> I, I have just a, a comment and there's, um, seems to me there's a lot to understand in terms of the credits and, and what makes sense for Wilmington as a rate payer and in Wilmington as a town government. And I, I would just, through the manager, just ask if the uh, uh, if the advisory board and our representatives want any help, feel the need to give us any information, just to to have an open invitation to them to let us know whatever they need. And I know they've uh, proved to be quite capable over time, and and really have a, a handle on some of the you know some of the special aspects that affect the municipal light department. So uh, just to kind of generally offer that support and let them know if if they need us just to call on absolutely and I think it's it's interesting that you bring that up because you know the font on this is first of all you need a magnifying glass to read it but secondly is that um, some of the votes that were taken I mean they passed by a very small margin so there's, there's a, there are different differing opinions and then but it did pass through in the cab vote it passed through as well which I was surprised and the cab vote was actually four to one where the other was three to two so um, where the boards of selectmen are more in favor of realizing the revenue because it's quite substantial money. So I'd be interested in, in getting a little bit more educated as to the pros and cons of, of this because, I mean, by holding on to them and letting them expire and not realizing the revenue, I mean, that, that's going to hit the consumer on some level in terms of rates. So, you know. I'd be interested in knowing a little bit more. Well, you just said something to me that it kind of kills me, and I was going to kind of ask that. And you said the word expire, which I, I'm very not knowledgeable about how the, these these uh, renewable energy credits uh, and, and that that whole marketplace. And I'm anxious to learn. I feel like this whole RMLD, not them specifically, but this municipal uh, utility world has lived behind a curtain for me anyway. Um, so I'm glad that this is coming to our collective, uh, I don't want to say scrutiny, but our awareness and that we're going to hopefully uh, work closer together with Reading and our uh, North Reading and the other towns involved uh, to become more knowledgeable. But the idea that they can expire, like I thought, you know, if they, you, you hold them and maybe sort of accrue them over time or somehow they would uh, appreciate value or something, um, but to have them and then just lose them and never re realize any revenue from it just seems like a bad business decision and I guess I'm surprised that they would have let that happen so I'm, I'm anxious to understand the the nuances to what the decision-making process is there so I'm glad that this is on the, on the radar screen thank you Judy you're welcome it's it's not gonna happen overnight so it's this is just the first start you know the September 29th meeting so we'll have more updates I don't know if you have anything that you wanted to add yeah ma uh, madam chair I would uh, certainly um, look to uh, get additional information about uh, how these uh, uh, credits work, uh, working through our uh, delegates on the cab, uh, be prepared to provide something at a future selectmen's meeting that uh, gives a better uh, uh, indication of how they work, what perhaps some of the uh, issues were that were being considered in the vote that was taken to allow the credits to expire. I think it's it's important that we uh, have a better understanding of how they operate and what the pros and cons of letting them expire versus taking other action. 
Thank you. Then the only other item that was included was that they would, they just were indicating to us what I, which I didn't realize is that RMLD actually purchases the power um, their power from Middleton, and there was unfortunately you know an overpayment and that has been resolved. So it really just speaks to the fact that the town of Reading is looking to have more enforceable rights to be able to oversee and have a look at their financials on an ongoing basis to see how their money and financial decisions are unfolding as time goes on. See stuff like that's happening in every town, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. So on to important dates. Thank you. Uh, October 12th is of the Farmer's Market uh, Town Common parking lot, 1030 to 130 p.m. Uh, September 27th is the annual town cleanup meet at the DPW 135 Andover Street 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. September 28th is the uh, 10th annual half marathon and 5k run and walk. Uh, October 5th uh, Harndon Tavern open house 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. October 8th uh, brush drop off at Old Main Street 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. Uh, as uh, previously noted, the uh, Yentel Farm Workshop is on the 9th of October, uh, Wilmington Middle School Cafeteria, 7 p.m. Uh, October 9th also is the Reading Municipal Light Department Open House from 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. Uh, October 11th, uh, Fire Department Open House, Public Safety Building, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Also on the 11th is another brush drop off, Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, October 13th, as a reminder, is uh, Columbus Day. Town offices are closed. October 14th, the Board of Selectmen's next meeting here, uh, room 9, 7 p.m. October 15th is the last day to register to vote in state elections. The town clerk's office uh, will be open until 8 p.m. Also on the 15th is another brush drop-off, Old Main Street, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. October 17th is the Carter Lecture Fund uh, presentation of Soundscape and Troublesome, uh, Wilmington Middle School at 7 p.m. And then October 18th is another brush drop off, Old Main Street, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Thank you. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to enter into executive session for the purpose of discussing collective bargaining issues. Since discussing the subject in open session would compromise the purpose for which the executive session is being called, and further that upon conclusion of the executive session that the board vote to uh, adjourn the meeting. Do I have a motion? Second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Aye. yes. Thank you.